Hey, nerd, are you a fan of fire? Chaos. Destruction. Pretty colors. Who isn't? Stick around on this episode of Neutrino Tech, and I'll show you one of my favorite chemicals to keep around the lab. Potassium permanganate, whose chemical formula is KMnO4, is a pretty cool compound. It's got a lot of potential different uses. It is a strong oxidizing agent, which means it can essentially steal electrons from other chemicals or give up oxygens, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, other oxidizing agents that you might have heard of include hydrogen peroxide, nitrous oxide, and, well, oxygen. Now, along with some of the things I'll be showing you today, potassium permanganate can be and is used for a lot of different things, including treating water and disinfecting wounds. Gross. <sighs> By dissolving a little bit of potassium permanganate in water, it can be applied to wounds or various other skin conditions, either through a bath or a soaked dressing. Now, there are also a lot of fun and dangerous reactions completed with potassium permanganate. I'll start with the more benign reaction and things will get progressively more dangerous as we go along. Now, I will be posting a few links in the description to let you know where you're able to get some of the compounds I'm using today. But please keep in mind, I am a trained professional and many of the compounds we're gonna be working with today can be potentially super dangerous. So please don't try any of these experiments without taking all the proper precautions including conducting experiments in a well-ventilated area or preferably outdoors. Now, I, of course, always come prepared and keep by my side my handy dandy fire extinguisher in case of emergency. So to start things off, the first reaction we're gonna look at is called the chameleon reaction, which is a neat little trick that shows how manganese can change color based on its oxidation state. What we'll need for this experiment is potassium permanganate, sodium hydroxide, otherwise known as lye. Now, I'm actually gonna be using potassium hydroxide because that's what I had sitting around, but either will work just fine. Distilled or deionized water. And finally, some plain old fashioned sugar. So to start things off, I'll take my little Erlenmeyer flask here, and to that, we'll add about 100 mils of water. And that should be plenty. Then, we're gonna take a little bit of our potassium permanganate. Don't need much. Just enough. to make everything turn a nice, pretty purple, purplish pink. If you do too much, the colors will be too dark to see and you don't really necessarily want that. So in this guy, I'll add another 100 milliliters of water. And we'll go ahead and add our potassium hydroxide. Now potassium hydroxide is a strong base. So when this dissolves, the reaction will be exothermic, meaning the water will heat up. So we'll go ahead and turn on that stir bar. Yeah, and even without heat, you can tell that's a little, starting to get a little warm. Okay, since that looks dissolved, I'm gonna go ahead and add our sugar. Okay, now that everything is dissolved, we can take that off. We can set up here our potassium permanganate solution, which you can see is a nice purple pink color. And then we add the alkaline solution with sugar and we'll see what happens. Now, if we go back and watch that, you'll see the 
potassium permanganate starts out as a nice purple pinkish color, but when the hydroxide solution is added, the solution quickly goes to blue and then green. Now this is caused by permanganate oxidizing the sugar and forming manganate ions. Manganate ions are further reduced into manganese dioxide, which is yellow in color and insoluble in water. This will result in particles swirling around, although being that they're so small, it will look like they're in solution. Now eventually, if we let this sit here long enough, the particles would settle out and the solution will become clear again. Now you've probably seen some variations of this next demonstration, uh, often referred to as elephant toothpaste. Now, a lot of the demonstrations you'll see with this uh, aren't actually done with potassium permanganate, but this is a little variation of it. And all you need is your potassium permanganate, dish soap, regular old dish detergent, and hydrogen peroxide. Now this stuff is about 10 times stronger than what you would get at your local drugstore. Uh, you can still find it in places, but you need the high, more highly concentrated stuff. That's about 30% hydrogen peroxide. And then of course we'll need, again, some water. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's a little rainy outside, so I'm gonna do a small version of this one where I actually do it indoors. Wanted to do something a little bit more extravagant, but this should do the trick for now. We'll add a little bit of potassium permanganate in there, a dash of dish soap, and top it off with some water. Okay, now that the solution is mixed, we'll go ahead and add our hydrogen peroxide fairly quickly. And when the hydrogen peroxide and the potassium permanganate react, they'll form manganese dioxide, potassium hydroxide, water, and oxygen. Now, this reaction happens pretty rapidly and gives off a lot of heat. Now, the rapid release of all that oxygen in the presence of the detergent that we added results in the large amount of foam and volcano-like reaction that we see here. Now, like I said earlier, potassium permanganate does have a lot of other potential uses. I did mention that it works as a disinfectant, and it's also a good thing to keep around as a survival tool. So, let's say the zombie apocalypse comes, and now you're forced to survive on your own. Well, you can use the potassium permanganate to clean wounds, but you can also use it to start a fire. Now, there are a couple ways to do this. Typically, uh, antifreeze will work. Any type of sugar alcohol. Antifreeze is mostly ethylene glycol. You can also use propylene glycol, which is found in the non-toxic forms of antifreeze. Uh, it's also used in e-cigarettes. Uh, another thing that you can use that's used in e-cigarettes is glycerin. So let's take a look and see how this is done. So for this reaction, once again, we take our potassium permanganate and we'll just make a little pile down there. Now in this beaker, I've added some of the vegetable glycerin that I had mentioned and It really is as simple as adding a little bit on top. And we'll just wait for a second. So like most of the other reactions that we've seen so far, when you add the glycerin to the potassium permanganate, the potassium permanganate oxidizes the glycerin and causes a violent exothermic reaction resulting in this flame. It is continuing to burn. And it burns pretty hot too. So if we were to add some kindling around there, some dry wood, some grass, leaves, could easily start a fire. Now finally, we've arrived at the coup de gras. The creme de la creme. The papi le pew. Anyway, the main event. Now for the last experiment, we're going to be making manganese heptoxide, which is highly volatile and 
a little bit on the explosive side. So we're definitely taking this one outside. What we'll need for this experiment is our potassium permanganate, concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, even though that's all we technically need for a little bit of extra fun, we're gonna add some isopropyl alcohol. So let's go check it out. When mixed with potassium permanganate, a reaction occurs, initially creating permanganic acid, which is then dehydrated by the sulfuric acid to form manganese heptoxide, which is a dark green liquid that's highly reactive. Uh, the reaction also forms water and potassium bisulfate. Now, manganese heptoxide decomposes naturally around room temperature, but this decomposition becomes explosive at around above 55 degrees Celsius or so. Now this explosive reaction can be initiated by an impact to the crystalline form of the molecule, or, you know, we could just hit it with a torch. Another fun property of manganese heptoxide is its ability to spontaneously combust various oxidizable organic compounds, and things get real interesting when alcohol is involved. Wow, Josh, that was fun. Let's see it one more time in slow motion. Well, nerds, that's all the time we got for today. But if you liked the video, feel free to click like and subscribe. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And on the next episode of Neutrino Tech, I'll be starting off a new series where I start to turn my lab into a lair fit for a Bond villain. See you then.